Hi, I'm Elke Valovirta and this is about Marit 5150 versus Stuck 6505, which is the uh, same amp than 5150, but with just a different name and logo. Okay, without further ado, let me play these both. A couple of riffs. This is actually from my forthcoming solo album. This riff from a song called Scary Frankie. So, first, the Mudded 5150. I will tell you soon what, what the mods are and so on. So. Well, there was also a little bit of Van Halen. Like you heard, they sound a bit different. Okay, let's go through the differences. Let me take my phone. So, I bought this amp a few years ago. I've had several different 5150s during the years. And I'll have this. It's an original black letter from 91, I think, or 92. Anyways, when I bought this, it had the choke mode. It's a Hammond 159R. So, what the Hammond mod does, I'm gonna cheat here, because this was made nice just recently by Eric Studer from Musics, and I asked him to wrote so that I will give you the <laughs> correct information. So, he said that uh, the amp has had most electrolytes, re electrolytes replaced, so when I bought this, and it was in really, and it is in really good condition. A Hammond choke was added, and then he writes, it's a power filter, reduces voltage, and changes bass slash tightness slash feel and peak attack. And I have to say that it does exactly that. So, don't know if you can see, I'll put a picture so I will tell you, but this volume, right now we're on the lead channel on both. This is 4. This is here above 3. And the volume, the output volume is approximately the same. So the both amps go to this KHE amp switcher, then I have a Sir reactive load here with my signature IR Valo Virtuos, and then it goes to this Steinberg audio interface and I'm recording this to Cubase. And where I have it what I have there now is a little bit of delay and room reverb and pitch, kind of like, you know, what Eddie used, especially live. So, it's not coming through the cabinet, because, I mean, 5150, even on 4, is extremely <laughs> loud. So, yeah. And so it, it reduces power, kind of like Variac with a plexi. If you saw my video about the Eddie Van Halen sound, I used the plexi. I don't know if you can see it. It's there with the, with the Variac. So it re reduces the, the power that comes from the wall, so to say. So the amp gets, the amp, the amp doesn't get as much power as it was designed to get. That makes it behave a little bit differently. And that way I'm able to crank the post gain, which is a master volume louder without the amp being extremely loud. So that's like the first thing, because you probably know, 
the more you dial the master, the more the amp starts to, you know, bloom, the low end becomes massive, the amp starts to breathe. If you turn too much, then it starts to fart and, you know, because I think what usually I want to do is find the perfect le level between preamp gain and, well, in this case it's labeled post gain, which is a master volume, so how much the power tube saturates. It actually makes total sense, because this kind of adds volume and how much saturation goes to the power tubes, and pre-gain is how much there is preamp gain. With the choke mode, you can find or achieve the fuller sound on lower volumes. So this is 4, this is 2.5 a hair below 3, and they are the same. To achieve similar results, similar behavior of the amp, I would have to crank this. You kind of have to dial this around 5 to achieve the same results. Let me actually do that. Yeah, as you heard, it started to clip because it's, it's so loud, but the feel immediately changed. I can feel that it, you know, start to come that. So that's the, the choke mod, very handy. And it changes the, obviously, the, the peak attack and the overall response of the amp too, because it gets less power than it was designed to. With high gain, this feels a little bit more sharper, maybe, and, and it's, it's tighter. This has massive low end now, but with other mods, this they sound the same, so don't pay too much attention what the what the logo says, same amp. So that's kind of famous, very used mods, which, if I understood correct, correct. It's quite easy do, to do if you're a qualified amp tech. I wouldn't even try to do it myself because I'm just a player. Okay, and then you probably know that this, this amp is cold biased. So what that means is you can basically throw any 6L6 tube in there without biasing. Let's see actually what Eric wrote or, or did he just wrote yeah he's done some broken shoulder joints t fixed clean jack sockets pcb added the bias mod bias the amp to 48 milliamps at 448 volts replaced microphonic v1 preamp tube and he replaced one sweatliner power tube with a better matched one because now because when it was cold biased it didn't really matter, you just throw in some tubes, it will sound like it sounds. And it actually sounds a bit colder that way, but now when the amp is kind of like what usually amps are that you have to bias, the one of the tubes weren't, you know, good enough or, or something. So there are sweat liner tubes, the three, the three that was there and he replaced one and, and biased the amp to 48 milliamps. And that also, I think, gives the amp a bit warmer feel. Let's change to rhythm channels. So, first the uh, stock one.
drop to. Let's put it back. Okay, that was that then. That's this one. Yeah, it is warmer and a bit fuller, but like I said, it kind of can get this to be warmer and fuller, but you really have to crank the master, the, the post gain, and then it's really loud, and it's still not quite the same, because it's cold biased, and this is now like normally biased, or well, no, whatever. And now I've been having Nothing else but a ISP decimator noise reduction, because without it... You know, lots of gain, these amps hum. And what I have here is, is one of my ESP custom shops. Let's try the differences with the drop A tuning and then the usual metal way. I will boost it with a TS-80... Uh, TS-9. JS, JHS Bonsai TS9 and with bus SD1. Let's see the differences with this setup. First, what I know that I need to do, because now passive medium output pickup. Now this is... Uh, I'm not sure, I've had this 20 years, this guitar almost. I think this is EMG 707 or 81. I don't know. Sounds good. So, let's put the gain around to... This pickup is harder and we're gonna boost this with the overdrive. So first, the stock one. No overdrive, nothing now. Actually, let me go to the screen and bypass the delay and stuff. So now I have a small amount of, of room reverb, so you get a similar room wipe what I have here. Okay, that was that. Then this one. Okay, this is a little bit warmer and smoother. This is a bit more aggressive and tighter. Okay, then let's boost both with SD1. Okay, SD1 now on. Let's start with the stock one. Okay, yeah, a little bit colder one, more metallic one, a little bit softer, mm, not, not softer, warmer, a little bit more low end. I think I prefer the SD1 with this muddied one. Okay, then let's switch the SD off and JHS Bonsai, which is fantastic. Swiss Army of Tube Screamers, and what I have there here is now a TS9 volume maxed gain a zero tone 3 o'clock. Okay, then let's start with the stuck one. And first, like that, nothing on, and then I engage it.
think the TS9 works actually a bit better with the stock one. Because this one, I feel it was a little bit was too soft. The difference is quite subtle and to be honest, I like both. I really can't decide which one is better. The other is more metallic sounding, colder sounding. You know, you kind of want to have in metal and this is just, you know, bigger, fuller, more low end. Okay, then what I need, what I do, one more. So I will switch between ST1 and TS with this one. So you, so you hear. So first I will start with the TS and then I'll switch to ST. It's gonna play some, you know, simple chug. Yeah, the TS was on the last. I prefer TS with the with the stock one. Okay, then this one and first TS. Yeah, with this one I prefer the SD. The TS doesn't cut the lows enough. It's, it isn't as tight, but because this is a bit colder sounding and tighter, you know, in the first place, I think the TS9 works better with this one. These are the differences, and if I've understood correct, the bias mod and the choke mod, they are quite standard procedures. <laughs> so, shouldn't be hard to do by a qualified amp tech. If you feel that your 5150 or 6505 is a bit cold sounding and you're not be able to play or with the with the feel not until you crank it really loud so then you get this power amp thump the bias mod uh, the the choke mod will help on that so because it reduces the power so you don't have to turn the master as loud to get the power amp you know thump and the bias mod obviously then you can decide how cold or how hot you're going to bias the tubes so you're not stuck with just a you know cold setting thanks for watching all of us take care bye